All right, week 17 in the NFL. This is the final week of the season. There's a few things to be decided this week. The AFC has five teams with a 10-5 and five record with only four playoff spots available that are up for grabs. Colts, Dolphins, Browns, Ravens, and Titans, all five of those teams, only four of them will make it in. Steelers and Bills are trying to secure the number two seed. Buffalo can clinch it with a win. They are playing Miami, though, one of the teams that is fighting for a playoff spot. The NFC has the football team, Giants and Cowboys, all in contention for the NFC East. If the football team loses, then the winner of the Giants-Cowboys will win the NFC East. If the football team wins over the Eagles on Sunday night, then Washington will clinch the NFC. So it's really on Washington, but three of the four teams can win. Just the Eagles have been eliminated. Uh, the Bears, 8-7. and seven. Rams, 9-6. Cards, 8-7. and seven. They're fighting for the last two wildcard spots in the NFC. The Bears... The, Oh, sorry, Green Bay is in control of the number one seed, but New Orleans or Seattle, if they win and Green Bay loses, can jump up and grab the number one seed from the Packers. Let's get it started. Atlanta in Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, six and a half point home favorites. Falcons are six and four straight up and five and five against spread their last 10 versus the Bucks. No Julio for Atlanta once again. No big story this year, really all year long, that's been the case. Atlanta is one and five straight up their last six games overall. Total's gone over in eight of the last 10 meetings between these two teams, and all of the last five games have gone over the total. Falcons are two and six straight up their last eight versus Tampa. Five of the last six Falcon games overall and on the road have gone under the total. The, the Falcons, they are five and one straight up in their last six in Tampa Bay. The Bucks are three and seven against spread their last 10 versus the NFC South. I like the Bucks to get the win here, but I like the Falcons to cover the spread. I think this game's a lot closer. I think it's the Brady factor that's inflated this number a little bit. No Julio. Atlanta's been dealing a little bit better lately. Baltimore on the road, 10, 13 and a half point favorites in Cincinnati to face the Bengals. The Ravens, they can clinch a playoff spot with a win or a Cleveland loss or an Indianapolis loss. Only Patrick Mahomes has a better win percentage as a starting quarterback than Lamar Jackson since 1970 with a minimum of 35 starts. The Ravens, they're on pace to be the first team to average 170 rushing yards per game in a, over the course of two straight seasons since Walter Payton and the Bears did it in 1983 to 1985. The Ravens, they're 5-2 straight up on the road this year. Baltimore is 6-4 and four straight up their last 10 versus Cincinnati. Ravens have covered the spread in each of their last five games while going 4-1 straight up. Baltimore is 2-4 and four against spread their last six in Cincinnati. Ravens are 4-1 and one straight up their last five versus the Bengals. Baltimore is 2-6 and six straight up their last eight games in Cincinnati. Baltimore is 11-2 straight up their last 13 on the road overall. Bengals are 3-8 and eight straight up, their last 11 overall. Cincy is 5-1 against spread, their last 6 games at home. Bengals are 2-10-1 against spread, their last 13 games in January. I like Baltimore. I don't care who's out for the Ravens right now or who's sitting. I Because of injury, I know Mark Ingram and a couple of their backs are out, etc. I like Baltimore to win and cruise big. I will take Baltimore to win and cover that large number. Dallas Cowboys, one-point road favorites in New York to face the Giants. The Eagles-Washington game got pushed to 8.30 so that these two teams would play hard. That's the only reason why that Eagles game is late. So, Because it's the one that really doesn't matter. Washington wins their in regardless of the outcome of this game. Dallas. There is an 80... Actually, it's in New York, sorry. There's an 81% chance of rain at game time. Dallas is 5-10 and 10 against spread overall and 2-5 of five against spread on the road this year. Cowboys are 7-3 and three straight up and 6-3-1 and one against spread their last 10 versus the Giants. Dallas is 5-2 and two against spread their last 7 games overall. Cowboys are 4-2 and two straight up their last 6 overall. Dallas has won 7 straight games versus the New York Giants. The boys, they're 2-8 and eight straight up their last 10 road games though. Dallas is 1-4 and four against spread their last 5 games versus NFC East opponents. The Cowboys have put up 30 plus points in three straight games. All three have been wins. That's why they're in the situation they're in right now. Giants, they're 8 and 7 against spread overall and 2 of 5 against spread at home this year. New York is 1 and 4 against spread in their last 5 overall. 
Four of the last five meetings have gone over the total. Giants are two and six straight up at home, their last eight versus Dallas. All five of the Giants' last five games have gone under the total. New York is 4-1 against spread their last five versus the NFC East. The Giants have failed to score 20 plus points in five straight games and nine of their 15 games this year, they failed to score 20 plus points. I think the Cowboys get the job done. I think they win four in a row, win the NFC East title because I think Washington will somehow choke, although I'm not positive I'm going to bet on that. I like Dallas to win and cover that game. Miami Dolphins on the road in Buffalo. This game should be a good game. I'm really looking forward to this game, especially if these two teams go all out with Buffalo wanting the number two seed in the AFC overall and Miami fighting for one of the last four playoff spots. Dolphins are two-point dogs in Buffalo. Bills are 6-1 and one straight up and 5-2 and two against spread at home this year. Buffalo is 7-3 and three straight up their last 10 versus Miami. The total's gone over in eight of the last 10 meetings and each of the last five meetings overall and in Buffalo have all gone over the number. The Bills are 6-1 and one their last seven versus Miami straight up that is. Buffalo is 7-0 against spread their last seven games overall. The Bills have won five straight and six of their last seven at home. Buffalo is two and five against spread their last seven versus the AFC East. Dolphins are five and two straight up and four and three against spread on the road this year. Miami is nine and two against spread and straight up their last 11 games overall. Dolphins are five and one straight up their last six road games. Miami's defense, they forced a league high 27 turnovers. I think that's going to be the difference in the game. I think the Dolphins get a field goal win here in Buffalo. Buffalo, I think they're going to play hard still, but I think they might be a bit of a letdown coming off. Knowing that they're in the playoffs, they're guaranteed a top three spot in the AFC regardless what happens. I, I, I believe, I could be wrong in that, but I believe they can't slide anywhere worse than three where they are now, or three if Pittsburgh wins and they were to lose. I think that's the only thing that can happen. I, I like Miami to win this by a field goal. I think a bit of a letdown after that nationally televised stomping of the Patriots, their rival for the last 20 years. I think this could be a, a, a nice spot to catch Miami in and ensure them a playoff spot. Minnesota on the road, four and a half point favorites in Detroit to face the Lions. Adam Thielen can become the first player in NFL history with 15 plus receiving TDs and fewer than 65 receiving yards per game in a season. Delvin Cook, he's out for Minnesota. The Vikings are the only team in the NFL that haven't allowed a 100-yard receiver since week seven. Detroit is the second team in NFL history to officially have three different coaches, head coaches, perform the duties of a head coach during a game in a single season since the 1941 Steelers were the only other. Galladay, he's out for Detroit. Didn't write a lot about this game. I don't like either team that much. I think Minnesota wins by a field goal, so I pick Minnesota win the Lions to cover. New York Jets first, the New England Patriots. Not a lot in this game because I don't think this game means much. I don't think a lot of people will be watching unless you're Jets or Patriots fans, really. The Jets have been outscored 71-3 in Sam Darnold's two career starts versus New England. Quite the difference there. New England's four receiving TDs by wide receivers and tight ends this year are the fewest in a single season since the Saints in 1981, not including straight shortened seasons, and they only have eight total passing TDs on the year as a team. Uh, the last time the Jets won a game in New England was Week 11 in 2008. Patriots have a long list of questionables. I believe there's 16 questionables, a couple out, and one or two doubtfuls. It's absolutely insane. I think the Jets, they are going to win another game. They're locked into the number two spot in the draft, so it doesn't hurt them or help them in any way whatsoever. I like the Jets to win and cover this game. Pittsburgh on the road. Big Ben's out. Mason Rudolph, he'll be starting Pittsburgh. Nine and a half point underdogs in Cleveland. Pittsburgh, they're 9-6 against spread this year. Steelers are 8-1-1 one one their last 10 games against the Browns and 5-4-1 and one against spread versus Cleveland. Pittsburgh is 1-4 against spread their last five overall. Steelers are 35-7-1 versus Cleveland since 1999. That's the highest win percentage by any team over another with a minimum 15 games being played in the head-to-head -head series. Uh, and a win percentage of 826, in case you're wondering. 
The total has gone under in 15 of the last 20 road games for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Six of the last seven meetings in Cleveland have gone under the total. Cleveland is 6-9 and nine against spread this season. Browns are 3-7 and seven against spread their last 10 overall. Cleveland is 9-3 straight up their last 12 at home. The Browns are 0-5 against spread their last 5 versus the AFC North. And Cleveland, the last time they won a Week 17 game was 2009. Their playoff hopes are on the line this week. The Browns have lost 12 straight games to Pittsburgh. And Marquise Pouncey, their starting center for the Steelers, he's also not playing this week. That could be the biggest factor. I don't know what to do in this game. Mike Tomlin, I love him. I think he's got something schemed for Cleveland. I think their bad luck continues. I'm going to Pittsburgh. Pick Pittsburgh as the upset of the week, just based on the, the size of the point spread. I like Pittsburgh to win this game outright. Arizona on the road to face the LA Rams. Three-point home dogs is LA. The Cards, they're 2-8 and eight straight up and 2-7-1 and one against spread their last 10 versus the Rams. Arizona's 2-6 and six against spread their last 8 overall. The Cards are 0-6-1 and one against spread and 0-7 and straight up their last 7 versus LA. Arizona's 10-4 straight up their last 14 games in LA when they face the Rams. The Cards are 3-10 and 10 straight up their last 13 versus the NFC West. 10 of the last 12 Rams games have gone under the total. The Rams are 7-0 versus Arizona in the Sean McVay era. That's since 2017. But the big thing here is Jared Goff is out. Therefore, I am all over the cards. I'd love them to win this game this week. Arizona to win and cover the three points. Green Bay Packers 12-3. They can clinch. Like I said earlier, they can clinch first place best record in the NFC with a win over Chicago. Not going to be easy. The Bears still have a chance at the playoffs. Packers, their four-point road favorites. Green Bay, their eight and two straight up and six and four against spread their last 10 versus the Bears. Aaron Rodgers is a career 19 and five straight up for Chicago. Packers have won five straight. Green Bay is 15 and five against spread their last 20 versus Chicago. The Packers are 8-1 straight up their last 9 versus the Bears. Green Bay is 8-3 straight up their last 11 road games. The Packers are 9-1 straight up their last 10 in Chicago. The Bears are 3-6 straight up their last 9 overall. The total's gone under in 14 of the Bears' last 18 games at home. I like Green Bay to win this game. I think it's a field goal game. I think Chicago can stay close, but I think their playoff hopes are done. Their division rivals will knock them out this week. Jacksonville. 1-14 Jacksonville Jags. They've clinched the number one pick in the NFL draft this upcoming season or this upcoming draft, whatever the fuck you want to say. They are 14-point road underdogs in Indy to face the Colts. The Jags are 1-14 straight up this year and are 0-7 straight up on the road and guaranteed that number one pick. Jacksonville is 7-3 straight up and 8-1-1 against spread their last 10 versus Indy. The Jags are 9-1-1 against spread their last 11 versus the Colts. Jacksonville is 1-6 straight up their last 7 games in Indianapolis. The Jags are 1-6, they're 4-9 against spread their last 13 overall, sorry. Jacksonville's lost 10 straight games. Colts are 1-4 against spread their last 5 at home. India's 2-5 against spread their last 7 versus the AFC South. I think Jacksonville knows they got number one pick. They got nothing to play for. They're not going to play spoiler over Indianapolis. I'm hesitating a bit to take the 14, but I don't see any other way to look at this game. I'm just going to stay away from it. But if I was betting, I'd pick the Colts and I'd lay the points. All right. Pick them by the 14. Chargers on the road to face Kansas City. Kansas City, Tyreek Hill out. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire out. They are both sitting out, I believe, just because, well, the Chiefs have the number one seed in the entire league locked up with their 14-1 record. They're three and a half point underdogs at home against Chargers. I don't care who's sitting for the Chiefs. I still think they're a better fucking team. Chargers are 1-9 straight up and 4-6 against spread their last 10 against KC. LA is 1-12 straight up their last 13 versus the Chiefs. The Chargers are 2-6 against spread their last 8 versus Kansas City. LA is 3-6 against spread their last 9 overall. Chargers are 2-9 straight up their last 11 versus the AFC West. KC is 6-1 straight up their last 7 at home versus the Chargers. The Chiefs are 0-6-1 against spread their their last seven games overall though. Kansas City is 13-1 straight up their last 14 at home and I don't think the Chargers are 
able or good enough to stop Kansas City. Even with everybody that's sitting out and hurt for the Chiefs, I still like Kansas City to win this game outright, and therefore, I'll love betting on them as an underdog. The Raiders, they're in Denver to face the Broncos. Broncos, three-point home dogs. You have the Raiders are 5-2 and two straight up and 4-3 and three against the spread on the road this year. Denver is 2-5 and five straight up and 3-4 and four against spread at home this season. Las Vegas is 6-4 and four straight up and 8-2 and two against spread their last 10 versus the Broncos. The under has hit 9 of the last 10 meetings, including the last 8 games in a row between these two. The Raiders are 1-5 and five straight up, their last 6 overall. Las Vegas is 6-0 and all against spread, their last 6 versus Denver. The Raiders are 6-12 and 12 straight up, their last 18 versus the Broncos. Las Vegas is 6-1 and one against spread, their last 7 versus the AFC West, though. The total's gone over in 12 of the Raiders' 15 games this season. The Broncos are 2-5 and five against spread, their last 7 versus the AFC West. Denver's won 5 straight, week 17 games versus the Raiders. I think their luck continues... I think this is a field goal game. I think the wrong team is favored by the field goal here. I'll take Denver to win this game outright. New Orleans Saints on the road in Carolina. The Saints' entire running back room is out versus Carolina. All the running backs out. No run game at all. Is it going to matter against Carolina? They've been in more close games and one-score games than any other team in the league this year. Is this a chance for them to knock New Orleans into maybe the three seed in the NFC. The Saints have scored 26 plus points in nine straight games with Drew Brees as their starting quarterback. Saints are eight and two straight up, four, five, and one against spread their last 10 versus the Panthers. The total's gone over the number in eight of the last 10 meetings. 12 of the last 17 meetings in Carolina have gone under the total. New Orleans are six and one against spread their last eight overall. Saints are one and five against spread their last six versus the Panthers. New Orleans is 12 and two straight up their last 14 road games. The Saints are 6 1 against spread their last 7 versus the NFC South. Carolina's 4 1 against spread their last 5 overall. The Panthers are 2 9 straight up their last 11 games at home. Carolina's 5 0 against spread in their last 5 games in January. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what to make of this game with all the running backs out. Kamara, he caught COVID first, and now because of the contact rules and everything their entire running backs are down i don't know what to do here i think i i might take another upset this week i think i'll take the panthers to win this game outright not by much just squeak out like a one two three point win with a field goal at the end i keep looking at this side because i usually have my fucking camera pointed at the top corner here on my phone and today it's over on this side here and i keep on fucking that up i apologize if it looks like i'm looking off but that's why it looks like i'm looking this way instead of this way like i should be at you guys uh, yes, Seattle on the road, seven point road favorites in San Fran to face the 49ers. The Niners are one and six straight up and against spread at home this year. Seattle is four and three straight up and two of five against spread on the road this season. San Fran is two and eight straight up and four and six against spread their last 10 meetings. The over is seven to and one their last 10 between these two. The Hawks are five and one straight up their last six overall. Each of the last seven Seattle games have gone under the total. Seattle is 15 and four against spread their last 19 first San Francisco. The Seahawks, they're 12 and two straight up their last 14 meetings as well. Seattle is 0 and five against spread their last four road, last five road games, I should say. The Hawks are 5 1 straight up their last five in San Fran. Seattle has 17 points or fewer in five straight games. Not a good sign, especially with how bad that defense has been this year. Niners are 2 and 6 straight up and against spread their last eight overall. San Fran 1 and 6 against spread their last seven overall at home. The Niners are 1 and 5 straight up at home versus Seattle. San Fran is 12 and 3 straight up their last 15 games in January. I don't know. I think Seattle's offense gets right this week. I think they get the win here, and I think San Fran... I, th I really like that number. This game's going to be a push, in my opinion. And just because I'm picking Seattle to win, I'll pick them to cover the spread, but this game should push. Tennessee, 7.5 point road. Favorites in Houston to face the Texans. How big a feast is Derrick Henry going to have on that second-worst run defense that Houston owns. Oh my goodness. If you like running football, or if you want to see somebody just do fucking damage, I know what the Saints did last week was fucking impressive. What was that? Six TDs by Kamara or whatever the fuck he did? Fucking incredible. 
Uh, the Titans, they're 5-2 and two straight up and 3-4 and four against spread on the road this year. Titans win the AFC South with a win. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, the two teams are 5-5 five and five straight up and against spread their last 10 meetings. Tennessee is 13-6 straight up in their last 19 games. The Titans are 6-13 against spread their last 19 versus the Texans. Tennessee is 4-2 straight up their last 6 versus Houston. Eight of the last nine meetings in Houston have gone over the total. Uh, Titans are 6-3 and three against their spread the last nine games versus the AFC South. The Texans are 2-5 and five straight up and against spread at home this year. Houston's 1-4 and four straight up their last five overall. Texans are 2-4 and four against spread their last six versus the AFC South. Houston has the league's second worst defense, like I said, and that is the reason I think Derrick Henry and the Titans are going to run away this, with this game. I like them to win by 10 to 14 points, somewhere in around there. Definitely winning and covering the spread and locking up the AFC South. Final game of the week, the Sunday Nighter Washington football team at Philadelphia. Philadelphia three and a half point home underdogs. Football team is four and six straight up and five and five against the spread their last 10 versus Philly. Washington has allowed 20 or fewer points in six straight games. That's the longest current streak in the NFL and they should be able to hold the Eagles to under 20 unless Jalen Hurts can go off. He has played all right considering he's only had a couple starts in his career. The football team, they are 4-1 straight up with Alex Smith as their starter this year. 2-8 with anybody else under center for them. The total's gone over the number in 7 of the last 10 meetings. 5 of the last 6 meetings in Philly have gone over the total. Washington's 5-1 against spread in their last 6 overall. The football team is 1-6 straight up and 2-5 and against spread in their last 7 versus the Eagles. Washington's 4-1 against spread their last 5 road games. The football team is 3-12 straight up their last 15 games versus the NFC East, though they have beat Philly already this season. The Eagles are 2-5 against spread, 1-6 straight up their last 7 games overall. Philly is 4-1 against spread their last 5 at home. The Eagles are 1-4 against spread their last 5 versus the NFC East. I, I just think Washington's going to fuck this up somehow. I think somehow the Eagles will win some stupid game like 2017 or 17-16 or says so something stupid is going to happen in this where the Cowboys win the NFC East. And I'm just going to laugh my fucking ass off. That's my week 17 picks. See you guys next week for a little playoff action. Peace.